at some point, I'd make one of those would, teams in 1880. You like Give me a the, fucking break. You'd get into a Ty Cobb. Right. But I mean, after I get off my shift at the railroad, yeah. I'd be... Yeah. You know. No, I don't know. I might be with Kirkjian on this one because that's a skill 1880? sport. 1880? It's a skill sport. I just don't think there were that many guys. Okay. Uh, nobody was lifting weights. No. And the bats were huge. There's no way guys are throwing hard. I, you I think whatever. You, could, you think you could hit... 200 in the 1930s 200 yeah uh 1950 maybe not 150 well 150 i wouldn't be around very long yeah you're right but what if you know they were like it's cool he's a podcaster (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna give a good old-fashioned hello uh from the lakeside studio lando landover maryland hello uh josh harris (laughs) Is gonna rename the fucking the football team, the Commanders, whatever you want to call them, guys. I asked you what what this team should be called. Third go around here, I think it's the Hogs. I think it's the Hogs. What's wrong with the Hogs? Did Josh Harris, uh, did he put any limitations on what they may or may not be called? Like last year, they were like, we're not gonna do anything having to do with X, Y, or Z. Is this a? Is it just like wide open? It seems pretty wide open. Uh, I don't think that I, th- I think it's all kind of a rumor right now, right? Like they're just like, yeah, they might change it, they might not. Um, yeah, but it's fucking almost August and training camp's just beginning. This is a perfect storyline. So what do, what are we going to call the Commanders when they change their name again? Because they never should have been the Commanders. I think the Hogs is pretty solid. Like it's going back to pre Snyder, right? I like the Red Wolves. I've always liked that idea where. You know, you can turn all the lights off in the in the stadium and everyone has like the red eyes and stuff and it really creeps out the other team. You know, I think they're all going to get red eyes. They're all going to get Kyle Vandenbosch contacts, dude. That's a great like gimmick night, you know, red eye night. When I met Kyle Vandenbosch, he was like one of my heroes because my dad used to give me like a DVD player when I'd go on the road. Of course, one time I put a a DVD called Fire and Ice and left it in there. Dad found it when we were on the road. He he just walked into my bedroom. And was like, "Here you go." Uh, <laughs> but usually, Kyle Vandenbosch was in there, and I just watched Kyle Vandenbosch end zone footage. And I got to meet him during joint practice, and he fucking terrified me. He those fucking red contacts. The guy doesn't smile at all. He's just he's just workmanlike. Uh, no, Red Wolves is cool. I guess. You just called it tacky. You think it's cool? I'm just trying to transition <laughs> to the next submission, Ryan. <laughs> Okay, what is it? What do you? Th- I, we don't know. What do, what do you like? I, I like the football team. God. Yes. <laughs> Dude, the football team did I, have a, a certain charm to it. it it's like quoi. the band. Like, it's just so pure. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I think they, I think they had it on the money with that. I mean, hard to argue with that. It's funny because at first, anything that gets announced, everyone's going to hate. No one. It's impossible to do anything in today's world and be like, you know what? Good idea. Throwbacks are going well. I just, I think it's funny that pe- people retroactively like football team. I think the 76ers plays. <laughs> <laughs> just ex- and all they have to do is say, I'm just expanding our brand. That's, cool. That's what this purchase was. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. to expand the Philadelphia 76ers brand. If I was brand. an owner, I'd have four teams named the same thing. Yeah, you uh, could do it. I mean, look, back in the day, they couldn't come up with anything other than like Tigers and Wildcats mm-hmm. or just named after Sox. Yep. So, you know, that's what the Reds are. No green that, Sox. That's what the Red Sox. Somebody should have done it. Yeah. The Red Sox should have been a, a green team to just keep it. The Red Sox should start fucking losing right now because I, I want to remind you I have the season uh, under win total. I think it's like 81. If Washington does go to the 76ers, do you keep the, the colors? You know, Do you change the colors? I think, you cha- I think you keep the colors and you go hogs, in my opinion. But if you're going Sixers, I don't know. You could just do, like, you could say they were throwbacks and you never go back to your origin. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> this is the situation where you finally get one of those stupid fucking edits to come to fruition where Saquon Barkley's wearing a Knicks logo on his helmet. You know, like that mm. kind of thing, these crossover. <laughs> I've tagged you with a few of those. <laughs> and then, but here's the thing. Does Harden go, I'll play for them? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, man. Strip club scene in D.C., not very good. Well, I don't I know, that, look, for, I don't know that for seven, sure. I don't a lot of, I've never been to one. He'd go to Crystal City Restaurant, which famously serves sushi, mm-hmm. and it's famously invited us up to do content. Haven't gotten permission from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I 
How do you think she'll? Do? You think she'll be okay with that? She's pretty cool, and I think you could pitch it a certain way. But I don't know if you're going to get the clearance on that one. I remember we did one from a place called the Squire outside of Boston. It was like right off the highway. I mean, the exit basically filtered you into their parking lot. And I was like, "What are we doing again?" You did, like, a, you did a strip club pod. We did a remote from there. Damn. <laughs> right, but they nobody was like. I don't know what the deal was. I don't remember the stripper part so I was just like wait what this is we're okay with this and they let us do it how were the acoustics bad the food was I think it was the squire yeah I don't want to I don't want to knock it okay so we can only hope it's the hogs um we're here in Montana rye man like uh last week we had this like it wasn't a long planned trip it was sort of I don't know well I didn't come last year I went to Iceland and so then I thought like wait I can't have that happen again because you know how much I love coming yeah. out here I love seeing your kids. Uh, yeah. I haven't been here since the compound's been expanded. So this is like, I'll never miss another. Gas and diesel. Right. On-site gas diesel. We're, we're installing a rice bin. Okay. A grain. <laughs> They're not going that far. But grain storage. It is a bit of a compound. And last time Rod came out to the compound, we tell this story all the time. There was a forest fire. He had to stay in the trailer. Yeah, I felt bad as a host. So I really couldn't wait for my second chance to host Ryan last week. He was kind of going back and forth waffling. He really wanted to come out mostly for the fly fishing, but also, as he mentioned, to see my family. And, uh, you know, at the last minute, his flights were all fucked up. I told Reed, make a graphic, you know, like one of these Sam Darnold, um, you know, pointing at the, the camera with the big bold letters underneath. It says, Ryan's visit canceled, uh, plane trouble. But before we could even make the graphic, Ryan was back on it. He, uh, he left, what, Saturday? To come, I left Saturday, I know. To come in Saturday afternoon, hang out with your boy for two nights, went fly fishing day. We've had a pretty good trip, man. But my favorite part has been watching you watch me operate a boat. Yeah, that's right, because uh, we're both boat captains. Now. What? No, I'm saying now. Now we are. Now we are. I just got a new, it's just um, a different, got a new Hughes craft. I want to shout out Brett's Marine. Yeah, it's sweet, but I was totally thrown off by the aluminum siding on the bottom of it where you just roll into the rocks and dock that way. <laughs> well, you, I, it's a little, I can't quite do that. It's kind of interesting. It's a way different experience. Like, we're driving the same thing, but they might as well be different vehicles entirely. Right, and to be fair to you, too, like, you're doing just a neutral forward reverse deal docking. So, like, I have a completely different system. Your setup's a lot easier. It's like It actually part. is just a joystick that goes in any direction for the boat, but it's just a little, it's just a little bit more anxiety pulling that into a slip but i think it's totally different skills and i've been impressed you've been really good you're good eyes on the water thank you you good notice eyes on that. the horizon you yeah. gotta pay attention because you like can get the, a little like yeah when i'm in it for like a two-hour jaunt north or south yeah i can zone out a bit and be yeah. like wait but then it's like yeah but you're zoning because there's nothing in your vision yeah so. but you know i got i got a windshield i got windshield wipers that stuff can obscure my vision so it's we're good right to on around. it we kept the swim ladder down we took off we're right we on did something's keep wrong the swim ladder down right it was, it, well the, the biggest obstacle to overcome as a boater on the lake here is having a dad five minutes away it was a beautiful 27 foot cobalt yeah, he's he keeps throwing like, that in our face dude <laughs> he comes over and he's like what are y'all up to tomorrow and i'm like well me rye the boys meg we're gonna go out to the islands drink a couple beers hang out and, you know, like, I think he said three times, if you need to borrow my boat so you have more room, let me know. And that's right up there with the G-Wagon flex. I didn't tell you didn't tell you about this. He got a new G-Wagon. Did you see it in the driveway when I we did. went over there yeah, to work I out? Yeah, worked out today. It's a gorgeous G-Wagon. The paint, the paint code, I, I need it, like yesterday. Uh, but long story short, Meg comes home from the hospital, you know, after pushing out number three. And my dad, I walk out hearing that heavy ass German door slamming and he's got her peering into the G wagon. And I hear him saying, you know, check it out. Look inside. You deserve a push present. So your dad is paying for her G wagon? No, what? exactly. Right, no, the right. implication is that I'm going to pay for the G wagon. So you don't need that. Um, my dad, you know, like three times flexing on me with the boat. I ran, as you know, I ran the skag into the, Am I saying that correctly? Uh, the thing what? below the prop, the skag, the skag. You don't know. You guys yeah. don't. You, you don't. We're know. inboard. I'm You're in Volvo <laughs> Pentis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I scratched that up, and I made the mistake of telling my dad about it. 
And every time he comes over, he's like, yeah, check for some cavitation when you get no, that. No, capitulation. Thing. Cap- capitulation. <laughs> yeah, he was all over because he turned to me. He was like, did you feel any capitulation on that? I was like, I, I, no, like, we're on a lake going whatever. And yeah. Nice big outboard out there. Typical dad flexing it's on me. It's been fun, though, too, with the brothers because the brothers long. He's just been smoking me in everything possible. Oh, my I played, kids. I played a memory game with them. And like I got smoked. It was the morning after we went out, so I was like, "All right, let me get these guys a little later in the day and reset." And next thing I know, like Luke is four and he's flipping over a card and he's remembering a move from like twelve flips ago. You're really good with kids, man. Thank you. Yeah, well, they're smoking me, so they have no reason to be upset with me. They're just dominating me that Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't say my confidence is the highest it's ever been. You don't get a lot of reps, but you are very good with the kids. And honestly, you don't get tired of it. You sit out on the back porch and. And I can kind of set it and forget it for an hour. And Uncle Ry's got it. Yeah, I took him in the lake. And, you know, Chris will be like, hey, make sure Ryan's in charge. Like, if he tells you, don't do this, you know, don't do that. And they're like, cool, cool, no problem, no problem. As soon as we hit the water, they're like, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, they, they, they know how to test the boundaries. And then when I'm not around, they you know, when the black hat's not around. Right, because I remember I took Luke swimming when he was two. And you were like, he's he's really good, but, you know, you, and I was like, my thing is I'll always stand behind a kid in the water in case, you know, it's not like a current or anything. But it's it, I remembered it when you told me after the fact, like, he'll push the limits and then he'll, like, go, and then he just kind Forgets of freaks. Forgets that he can't swim. He freaks that he can't touch, and he's obviously a lot better now at four. And he had, like, a little, like, freak out two years ago. And then you feel terrible as the adult being like, I shouldn't even have let a two-year-old get this far out. But he was so – he's so aggressive with everything. He's an aggressive kid, man. Yeah. And actually, Waylon just interviewed Ryan before bed. So we have, we, we've we got a couple questions for, for Uncle Rye. You know, I told Way that when Ryan was coming, um, you know, he'd get a chance to ask him a bunch of questions about the NBA because Waylon is a huge NBA fan now. You know about that. Uh, and he said, like, on the podcast. And I was like, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do it on the pod. And so, and so he uh, he went to sleep over at Grandma and Papa's and come, comes home with this real official piece of paper written out, 10 questions. So we got a couple of the, the best questions that Waylon had to offer for you later in the pod as a bonus. And Diane, um, like, plants little seeds with Waylon. So I imagine the questions are going to try to make me look bad. Well, so, what was the plant? Well, as soon as the first time I saw the kids, because they weren't here the first night I got here because there was a sleepover at the grandparents. So Chris's mom is in the RV. Well, I guess you would just call it like the mule, you know, uh, like more than an ATV. ATV. Yeah, yeah, yeah but like it's a little UTV. bit more. Yeah, UTV. Utility vehicle. UTV. And she's driving it, and the two boys are next to her. And then as I walk away to get back in Chris's truck, Waylon goes, hey, Ryan, why are you wearing my shorts? Because well, kids so, are just killing the five-inch inseam. So the five-inch inseam is aggressive, and Rye is a violator on that thing. Like, I mean, like the shorts just get shorter they ride as the up. years go on. And, you know, he'll Sweat. send me this Legends gear, which Legends is awesome. I'm wearing Legends cutoff sweatshorts right now. And get you some more but, of those. Yeah, but, like, yeah, these are a little old. They got a lot of mileage on them. But he'll wear these five-inch inseams. And we were on the island together having beers yesterday at 6 o'clock. And we had the whole island to ourselves. It's me sitting on the ground, drinking a beer, Rye sitting on the cooler. We've got my boat. And all of a sudden, two pontoon boats full of dudes pull up. And I swear I thought I heard him say, D.L., and I don't think they were talking about, you know, like um, like defensive line. I think they were thinking I had a DL. You know what I mean? Because you got those five-inch inseams on. You're pretty in shape. You look a little metro for, for Montana. I think people were wondering if I had, like, a secret lover. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that thought went through my head. Do you think we could date? <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> I think you'd get pretty tired of me. Uh, but, yeah, shout out to Legends, man. They make great shorts. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're fucking pumped about this crosstalk right now. Well, you know, like not everybody spends three hours a week on the pec deck that's wearing five-inch inseams. It's, it's just the combination. It's crazy. I put on the sevens and go, man. Yeah. I put them back. So, anyways, the, be- the best part about uh, the, the trip to Montana. The, the pictures from this era will be terrible. The, be like, what were you doing for three well. years there? But I'm still in it. You look like one of those first bodybuilders that were like kind of <laughs> jacked. Like, you're really jacked. But, like, you look like one right. of those first. Like, <laughs> like, whenever I see a badass from the 20s, I'm like, come on. You know? The and guy- the thing is, is he'd murder me. Yeah. But you see him and you're kind of like, 
You know, like I always think about time machine things. Like I've said this probably before, even on this podcast, yeah. but I think of Eddie House got in a time machine and went back to 1950s <laughs> basketball. There'd be statues of Eddie House outside of every single gymnasium in the United States. And J.J. Reddick would hate on him. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't think he ever hates. No, hate J.J. Any? Reddick just hates on, um, what's his name? Um, Dolph Shays. Uh, Dolph Shays. Oh, Dolph Shays. Yeah. The I get it. I get it. I didn't yeah. know if you were going with like a Salim Stoudemire thing here, but no. I... Uh, I every time I will like look and I'll, I'll see some stuff and it's like what if like just Chris were in a time machine and joined like 1920s boxing? Yeah. Like, would you be awesome or would, would I, you actually get your ass? Would kicked? I grow up like Cinderella Man or like Chris Long? You'd be more towards Sil- Cinderella Man, I think. I would. Th- I mean, obviously there was still a lot of skill in it, but just the size of some of the guys. Yeah. Put. But, I mean, fuck. Put me in the 70s playing in the NFL. 70s NFL would be a good one. But again, Eddie House pulling up and dribbling in late 1950s basketball, people would be like, "Yeah, that X-Men would have come out then. Yeah, no question. They'd be like, he's the first one. The house center. Welcome to the house. You know? It wouldn't be a guard. No, the sport might be called something different. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But the real reason Ryan came up. Because we did, just to stay on the time machine thing real quick, is that at one point, Van Pelt and I, and I think Kirkshin got involved, I was like, what would be the best chance of like any of us getting in a time machine and being one of the best athletes of that sport. And Kirkshin was convinced there was no period in time in baseball that I could. I was like, are you serious, Tim? You don't think I could take a time machine to like 1880 and start running around and gunning, die, gunning <laughs> da- dudes down from the outfield? Like at some point I'd make one of those would, teams in 1880. Like, Give me a fucking break. You get into a Ty Cobb. Right. But I mean, after I get off my shift at the railroad, yeah. I'd be... <laughs> Yeah. You know. No, I don't know. I might be with Kirk Jen on this one because that's a skill 1880? sport. 1880? It's a skill sport. I just don't think there were that many guys. Okay. Uh, nobody was lifting weights. No, and the bats were huge. There's no way guys are throwing hard. I, you I think whatever. You, could, you think you could hit 200 in the 1930s? 200? Yeah. Uh, 1950s, maybe not. 150. Well, 150, I wouldn't be around very long. Yeah, you're right. But what if, you know, they were like, it's cool, he's a podcaster. <laughs> Actually, or some of the earliest radio guys were huge stars. Really? Back then, yeah. when radio had just gotten started. Yeah. yeah. Imagine? Yeah. All right, so anyways, he came up here mostly for the Garden Bar, which is uh, yes. it's a top bar in Big Fork, Montana. Shout out to our damn guy. Yeah, we talked to, I mean, like the water levels, they're low here. I talked yeah. about that on the podcast last week. We met uh, some sort of a hydrologist. We met a lot of fans of Ryan's. Ryan wore, wore his Chris Herring shirt, uh, the jersey out with the uh, Cuban link chain. And the I get dressed Pirate. up. Well, you used to get dressed up. Well, I used to get dressed up as in I'd wear like that NBA combine, you know, penny. That we used you to gave wear me. jerseys because I know it's so uncool to do it now. Yeah, but, so then I'm, I'm back in. Yeah, but like that's a bit over the line of like a Montana jersey. No, Montana a derfy, jersey. a derfy Chris Heron high school jersey with the Pirates hat and a gold diamond chain. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I can't, I don't, th- I think you're the first person to ever wear a chain like that into the Garden Bar. Potentially, so That's it's like Cowboy it. Bar. Any, anyways, when we go out there, we have a great time. We meet a lot of new people. I want to give out my my best guy of the week award to all the dudes that we met at the Garden Bar. I mean, we met so many dudes. Met a lot of dudes. Met a lot of dudes. Shout out to Breakside Brewery, our guy Scott. Oh, yeah, we love Scott. uh, Who came and hung out with us as well. But we got banged up. And, you know, it is one of these things. Like, we were sitting there in the water before we went out. And I was like, when's the last time you were drunk? And you were like, I don't know. When's the last time you were drunk? You've been drunk like twice this year. I hadn't been drunk in a month. I thought that was bad. Uh, We got out there. And about 1.20 in the morning, I tapped (laughs) you on the shoulder. And I was like, buddy, we got to go home. And you were like, have another beer, dude. Uh, and we ended up out there in front of the, the burger stand till 2.30 in the morning. I fell asleep with, with three sixes of spearmint in my <laughs> upper lip. Uh, I, I got fucking pummeled by the the, <laughs> the sprinklers. You know, like, he, he, that's an underrated experience coming home drunk at 3 in the morning as a grown man and trying to just like, all right, I'm going to keep it together. I'm going to be quiet in the house. I'm not going to wake the baby. I'm going to make a peanut butter sandwich without clanking the utensils. Uh, and as I'm walking up the, 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 the narrow strip of lawn, I just get fucking hosed and I walk in the house and I'm soaking wet. Um, you know, like, like that's what getting drunk 
as a middle aged man is. And uh, we did it. We did it this weekend. We had a we had a really good night. It was great because when we were on the island before. We take the boat out. We have a couple beers, and then yeah, we were going through the resumes. And I was like, man, it's been it's been a little while. And it was just great because you know when you're going out there. And then people are just like, why are you guys here? Why are you guys here? And you're like, why wouldn't we be here? Exactly. <laughs> why Why would we want to go anywhere else? Yeah. And it's basically automatic that we'll get one night in there. And, you know, I don't know. I, I, to me, that place is like a destination. I tell people about it. Well, don't. That's the thing. <laughs> Nobody's going to move here because of that. I, I might have in my 20s. But, yeah. Yeah. Little mailbag here, right? Um, we've got a couple good ones for you. Number one, this comes from me, actually. The Aaron Murray thing in Georgia. You saw Aaron Murray at a bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wouldn't have been the Northside Tavern. No. They would have recognized him in Northside Tavern. They don't treat people like that. At Northside. Yeah, but Aaron Murray, I guess, uh, got you know kind of big dog, the uh, the lead singer of that. It looked like a wedding band or something like that, that kind of band. Uh, the guy pulled Aaron Murray up on stage. He's wearing an Aaron Murray jersey. The singer is, and he's like, what's your name, buddy? Like, why are you up on stage? Kind of gives them the buddy treatment. And uh, to that, Aaron Murray said, you're wearing my jersey. So my question to you would be, who is the best college football player that could walk around and have an experience like Aaron Murray had? Um, I figure there's a couple good answers here. Not every Heisman winner is a terribly recognizable guy. But who would it be, Ry? Who would be the best football player that could walk around and get, I don't know, misrecognized or not recognized at all? Gordy Lockbaum. Who's that? Holy Cross. Played both ways. Was a Heisman finalist. I was going to say Troy Smith. <laughs> or fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, the- Troy Smith's a good one. Troy Smith's a good one. Wouldn't, it's, and, and beyond that, it's far enough removed. He was terrific at Ohio State, but like, you know, he was still kind of in the. Um, I don't know. I don't think anybody was watching Ohio State being like, this guy's going to be an NFL quarterback. Jason White could roll up. I'd have no idea who he was. Yeah, that's a good one. Jason White, Eric Crouch even wouldn't have any idea who he was. Denard um, Robinson and uh, and Toby Gerhardt would be good too. Those are both Yeah, I have no names. idea what Toby Gerhardt looks like. Guy damn near separated my shoulder. I have mm-hmm. no idea what he looks like. Major Didn't catch Apple license plate. Oh, Major Apple White. Yeah, that's, well, that's a good one. Danny um, Warfel. Now, you, when you get into the Warfels and the Winkies, by the way, Winky is huge. I've said this on this podcast before. I used to coach quarterbacks at uh, in St. Louis. The guy's fucking enormous. Just for that reason alone, I wouldn't think he was Chris Winky. I would have thought he was like Jared Lorenzen. God rest his soul. Next one, uh, who is Ryan's NFL comp? Okay, that, that, that one's for me, and we gave this some thought. Um, you know, I was going to say Wes Welker, but you were more than like a good return guy at your first stop. In, in Miami or at ESPN um, and there's no drop for you like you don't have a drop yet you know I don't have no I don't know um, uh, I think it's Jerome Bettis very good in St. Louis very good at ESPN uh, ESPN's like oh it's a passing league you know um, and and you go on to Pittsburgh to have a Hall of Fame career because I think the numbers bear it out you're one of the best in the game uh, and you know in the most you know, crowded market of all time. You still set up, set yourself apart. You're a high volume guy. You're a hard worker. I think Jerome Bettis, you hear the stories about he couldn't even get in the cold tub the next morning. I have a cold tub now. Yeah, you do. And like, I'd imagine after some of these nights, late night podcasting the next day, you don't feel great. So I think it's Jerome Bettis. Okay. That's pretty complimentary. I, I didn't know where you were going to go with that. I was trying to think of like, the third Bosa brother who was hurt more than those two guys are. Yeah. You know, is like the, takes it way too seriously. No, I'm kidding. Because they're both, they're both, well, I don't know. I mean, if you go like, how good are they at what they do? I mean, most people wouldn't ever want to say, no, you're as good at what you do as they are because yeah. they're incredible. Yeah. So I don't never get that kind of credit for it. Um, I definitely put in the work off the field like they do. Uh, Joey's hurt a lot though, right? Yeah. That might be my comp. Yeah. I'm hurt all the time. Are you? All the time. But like when it comes to actually getting the content out? No, I just mean like in general. Yeah, you are hurt. Like the other day on the beach, he's walking around like he's in high heels. It's because he has plantar fasciitis. Yeah, and both He can't walk on the rocks. I've never experienced that. I was like, wait, so don't walk on pebbles, hard rocks with (laughs) this this just awful injury that doesn't seem to want to go away. That is the the worst injury. I've had that. That is awful, especially if you play basketball it's horrible 
Yeah, I had it when I was in my 20s, and then it just, like, I went to get treatment for it, and the guy was like, it just sort of goes away. Well, now it's back. And when I play basketball now, the first, like, after the first couple minutes of warming up, I feel like my feet are in vices. Yep. And then I have to stop, and then it slowly releases. I've got, like, a lump under there, too. So when I was walking around on the stones, I was laughing, being like, this hurts so bad. Like, I don't know if I can go back in this way. And then we got some water shoes. We fixed it. Boses are... Uh, you know, arguably defensive player of the year. I don't know that I'm going to be winning any that award, kind of an award, uh, the equivalent. Um, who knows? You know, I try never, never put a you know salary cap on your life. I try not to ever, you know, impose a ceiling there. But I know that uh, Joey's hurt a lot, yeah. but he's good. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. What is Chris's NBA player comp? Now, I only ask this one because we've been asked before, and, and Kingston has an answer that he likes. Uh, maybe he can give you his answer and you can rate it. Uh, on a scale of untrue to true. I, I like the Drew Holiday comp. You know, he's got, like, family that are also in the league or great athletes, couple brothers. Yeah. Uh, good, solid player. The numbers aren't going to wow you. Doesn't doesn't get the all-star recognition or all-pro recognition, but contributes but to winning. Oh, no, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd know. rock with Drew Holiday. Yeah. He was maybe the second best player on the uh, – Olympic team, I think, or world world championship team. But yeah. then he was playing a little well. <laughs> what? You know, he gave this comp, and Drew was, Drew was playing really well the last couple of years, and he had his best season. And I was like, oh, I'm not so sure. I was going to say Kelly Olynyk. Yeah, were you? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, so what about Grant Williams? Grant Williams? I don't know. Vocal? <laughs> He's vocal, yeah. yeah. President, the vice president of Players Association. I was never that. You didn't want it. You Did you hear about were... CP3's injury? <sighs> Is it, what, what are you doing? Seriously. It's too late. For no, me right seriously. Now. Kenneth Parker's been playing through a broken foot. Oh, all right. I don't need, I don't need this. <laughs> I don't need this this late. Okay. It's my buddy. No, I take back the comp. <laughs> What, my Bettis comp? Yeah. What was the one you wanted to do? No. <laughs> you give me a Linux. I need to give you, uh, I don't know. A Linux, I mean, good. Yeah, that's good. I would never, I would never ever in a hundred, like I'll never forget walking out of the tunnel once for an SEC game and there was like a tight end that was going fucking crazy. And he's like, we got to tell them. We're, you know, and he was like doing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And Steve and I looked at each other. And I used to always have this like, it wasn't an, uh, a, like a sin. It wasn't like envy. But there was like a really, I think, I thought, I felt it as if it was like the best version of jealousy. I was watching these guys come out of a tunnel. Yeah. About to fucking go to battle that night. You know, stadium, fucking representing your school. And I'm like, I'm likely never going to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would see those moments and I'd be like, I can't imagine what this must have felt like. And I didn't really even understand it until I started traveling and then being lucky enough to be on the sidelines of the games. And there was this one game where this guy was just going fucking crazy. And Steve and I looked at each other and Steve just gave me this look. And I was like, when you were at Stanford, you must have hated that guy. <laughs> and he goes, and they never play. Yeah. He goes, those guys yeah, never play. The <laughs> they never play. And then he turned to me. He's like, that would have been you. And I'm like, absolutely not. It was like the most insulting thing he could have said to me. And I go, not only would I never be yeah. like that, because if I didn't play, yeah. I wouldn't be bad vibes for the locker room, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be fucking talking about anything if no. I didn't play. And when I watch like guys on a college team like get up and cheer the bench mob groups mm -hmm. that now in basketball you have to like get up and celebrate literally every single possession. Oh, shooting their like right. imaginary right. right, they all do these different the, things. Yeah. I always look at that and go, people would think I was a bad teammate because if I didn't play, I wouldn't <laughs> do any of those things. No, not at all. Right. Not at all. I wouldn't do those things. Like I wouldn't want to be play. advertising, hey, it's me again who never plays. One of the hardest <laughs> things getting older in the NFL is like, you know, GMs being like, I need you to be a leader, this sort of thing. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm getting like 10 snaps a game or that sort of thing. It's really hard for me to lead from the back. Yeah, well, I can be a leader during the week. But yeah. if you expect me to do all the bullshit yep. mic'd up stuff yep. that shows what – because, you know, I think all of us in the media and as fans 
do a really bad job of understanding. And we don't have access to really know what's going on. Not everybody's going to tell. But, like, just because a guy's mic'd up or, like, he comes back after an interception and there's some fucking guard who doesn't play. It's like, keep your head up. Yeah. Keep your head up. Like, all of a sudden, Joe Burrow's like, you know, I almost – tapped out mentally mm -hmm. until our third string guard told me to keep yeah and really the thing you know, about like motivation and that sort of thing is collective it's just energy that's yeah. all it is it's like being keeping a, the energy up being a good leader isn't the sound bite you know and i think we always fall for the sound bite. yeah and we we're about to because hard knocks is going to be uh it's going to be on soon okay the, i really like this question fight in combat in one war pre-desert storm which war and what's your branch of service Great question. Uh, the war has to mean something. You know? <laughs> has to mean something. That's not where I was going. Uh, I, if you're going just straight survival, I, I can understand what you're going with there. Uh, I just don't think there's anything replacing the Revolutionary War. And I would be part of the mass guys that as soon as Virginia dudes showed up in silk shirts and fancy rifles, they were like, look at these, look at these fancy lads. And they got in a huge fight in the Boston Common as they were all waiting out what they were going to do with their first battle, basically surrounding Boston because it was kind of an island and it had this thin neck that connected it. They've since built it all back in, so it's not the same. Look, Go back, look at maps. It's very different back then. And the British essentially allowed themselves to be trapped inside, and then they left. I mean, there's a million things I could talk about British strategy that just was fucking terrible. But um, I think that war, what you were fighting for, was like it was all on the line yeah all right and terrible odds biggest underdog ever granted the french and their superiority in the water helped quite a bit french don't get enough credit for that um because they just didn't want great britain to have this dominant series the french are like fine we'll fucking help you because we hate them mm -hmm. and then that pretty much went haywire anyway because when they had their own revolution they were like where's the help and people were like dude just save your propaganda we're trying to get our we're trying to get yeah. our our barns yeah. rebuilt here um i think that would have been a, that would have been the war i mean it would suck i wouldn't have cool gear <laughs> wouldn't have cool gear like some of the other ones but i mean you want me to pick normandy i mean it'd be great to survive it no, I'm but, talking about I mean, something like like um, Ricky uh, Ricky Gervais uh, Gervais. I always fuck his name up. Ricky Gervais. Uh, he had a bit on this. It was like he'd want to fight in the Falklands War because it was like a range war, and the the British had like uh, you know these uh, naval guns that went what like 17 kilometers or something. Where the Argentinians, the, they were the other belligerents. Um, they went like uh, nine nine kilometers or something. I don't know if we're doing metric or, uh, but the bottom line was you just had to like back off and you would be fine. Like that's the kind of war that was that's good for me. Ultimate reach, yeah, just like boxing. And, and like I was looking for all these. Yeah, it's like having reach. It's like being. Um, it's like your line, arm being it, twice as long. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's like was it Hearns or, or the other guy that had the reach? Hearns had incredible reach. Yeah, Hearns had great reach. Although there's a part of boxing where your reach can be too like basketball players you watch a lot of them throw a punch there's so much reach there that you're like yeah you know like you see this mo coming well this is away. the perfect amount of reach i got like right. six key kilometers of reach fathoms maybe yeah and 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 i looked hard at like a bunch of these like i looked for caribbean wars because i'd like to be like somewhere pretty you know while i'm just like hanging out and dude there like, were a lot of skirmishes a lot of skirmishes yeah throughout those islands yeah. yeah i mean a lot of it was shipping lanes and and rights and guys just started saying no this is ours but can you like, imagine you fighting mean? fighting in the falklands war though um like after it's over for even, who though for the british as, nah, as, as, it's not in my backyard can cool, you imagine yeah. look i'm telling you like having to fight in the revolutionary war where you're like if we lose this yeah, you're thinking different. You're thinking differently than me. I'm not that. I'm not that impassioned about. Not a patriot. I guess not. I mean, like you, you've kind of backed me into a corner here. No, I don't want to be in the Revolutionary War. I don't want to die by a little round bullet that that barely goes fast enough to break the skin. And they Just saw, lock them. They saw my leg off. You know. Um, yeah, the med tent, you got me there. Yeah, exactly. But you did pick the fuck, like you would be on a ship. Why didn't you just do, cut your leg off? Oh, here, why didn't you do Antietam? Why didn't you want to fight for the Union in Antietam? Well, I mean, hmm. that, that one, hmm. that one, hmm. well, now you're going to make it sound like I didn't want to fight something else and I want yeah. to fight. Yeah. So, I mean, you're just going to make me look. So bad I'm going to just stay out of that whole thing. Go right. Falklands. Oh, you now, make the, me look bad and then the, go back. The, to the only Falklands. bad thing about the Falklands war is like worst plane ride, like worst boat ride. If you look where the Falklands are, 
They're way down there, bro. Oh, so dude, after you win that war, yeah. you got to fucking sail six months to get home. Like, you don't even want to party. The parade. There's no like way. like Jokic with the parade. You want to talk about how many guys came back home and their wives are like, we had a kid. Yeah. Like, Did we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. And then uh, the last question we have here tonight is, uh, what, are you, what have you been watching? Uh, Rye, have you watched anything good lately? Uh, that's new? Yeah. Or old. I went back to Deadwood. Oh, yeah. I remember nice. you saying that. Yeah. I felt like I, I kind of lost momentum with it originally. And I thought, well, wait a minute. You love Westerns. You love those prime HBO shows uh, back in the beginning of the prestige days. And I went back and I'm like, this is just fucking awesome. And seriously, Swearingen is one of the greatest characters in the history of television he's great i couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying half the time because of the shakespeare thing but you knew kind of what it what he was getting yeah at. you could you get the point <laughs> yeah. but there's definitely a few times his verbiage where i'm like do i not understand anything he just said there uh, i'll even throw a subtitle on and rewind his scene yeah mm -hmm. uh, i watch everything with subtitles Huh? You just get in front of it. Uh, you know, I, I saw the trip to infinity. Uh, Matt, I think you have you seen that yet? It's yeah, on Netflix. I watched it today. So I feel better about dying now. <laughs> right, your life is infinitely small in the grand timeline. Well, also Any like a show to tell me that. We, we, yeah, well, we might be. Yeah, but we might be back, dude. That's what this show. Ah, uh, see, this whole thing though, like you don't believe in like any of this stuff, like singularity. Here's theory, what. Here's the deal, or whatever. I'm open to anything, yeah. all right? I'm open to anything. I mean, just the other day, thinking about something where it's like there's no border on all of this, if mm -hmm. you really think about it, right? Mm -hmm. It just keeps going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, wow, you know, that could get pretty heavy. So look, reincarnation, separate, parallel, whatever you want to call it, cool. But like when I hear people talk about like, oh, I was a Viking that <laughs> won a battle. And I, and, okay, what... What are you getting for lunch? Now there was you a know what kid. I mean? Like yeah, who gives yeah. a fuck? Yeah, but there was a kid, and it's and never you, anything boring. It's the, always something crazy, and then you're like, dude, it's not always something crazy. No, because They're, you can't go meet the person that's like, oh, I have a reading here, and you were a small time insurance salesman that lost look his it job, up. and then you look it up out. on YouTube. There was this kid in you know England, and he had this whole other life, like a continent away, and it was very regular, and he was able to to you know like he was too young, and this was before the age of the internet to actually triangulate or even be force fed a story that would make sense. But he knew every detail of this other kid's life that died early. Maybe, maybe open to it. Just don't know what it solves. I mean, it'd be cool if you could come back. Like what if it was just like the playoffs where whatever you did in your life, you're like, hey, you didn't advance. Yeah, right. No, yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to go back. Yeah. You're, you're in the playing game of life, and then you come back, and it's like you're four inches shorter. And you're like, fuck. Weinstein's in the, right. in the playing game. <laughs> he's like the Bulls. Dude, he's not even they, – they took his pick away from him. He's yeah, not even in the yeah, lottery, yeah. all right? So, but then if you do, like, you know, good shit like you do for the world, you know, because you really are one of those guys that backs it up, you come back, and it's yeah. like, hey – Guess yeah. what? You're a four or five guy. Might get now. a buy. You know? <laughs> yeah. That sort of thing. That's pretty good, right? I so so yeah, I like trip to uh to infinity. The math part was a little bit challenging. I also saw both extractions. I think we talked about this at the bar, Rye, but for the people that have seen extraction, my one biggest critique uh is that he was a little easy on the child soldiers. I think that got him in a little bit of trouble. But it's 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 the it's the classic playbook. It's like I'm out. Uh, somebody comes to visit me, talks me back into it. Uh, but there's a backstory, you know, like there's flashbacks, the whole thing. It's John Wick, but not as Metro. I haven't seen it. And you told me something interesting about John Wick. Yeah, they tested the movie with the puppy being killed and then the puppy not being killed. Yep. And when the audience just watched him murder everybody for no reason, <laughs> uh, they were kind of like, eh, killed a lot of dudes. And then when they tested it with the dog being killed, they, the audience was like, he couldn't kill enough people. Yeah, people, it's, people back to the original point. It's Bring the point people about, love dogs. Uh, it's the point about the, the fast guy, the really fast guy in Minnesota. Exactly. Um, and then I've also watched, uh, I've watched almost all of Jim and Andy. The uh, the Jim so I was kind of stoned and I turned it on thinking it was like a Jim Carrey documentary and I was like man they're giving this movie a lot of airtime 
you know, I've never seen Man on the Moon. When I, you yeah, never I saw it? Why wouldn't I'm, you want to see that? I don't know. Like, I didn't know He's who Andy Kaufman it. was. You don't have any, what? like, No, I'm not, I'm not fucking 40. No offense. I'm not 45. I know who Andy right. Kaufman is. Right, but yeah, I, but you're like 45 at heart. You also and like the Almond Brothers. I do love the Almond Brothers, but music's different. And so, uh, you know, I didn't know about this movie. And my big takeaway, if you don't know Jim and Andy, it's you know he was playing this guy Andy Kaufman and this guy named Tony, who was like Andy Kaufman's sideshow Bob yep. uh, on his show, right? Right. Uh, and you think it was impressive seeing him do Andy Kaufman? I mean, him doing the Tony guy. I think they did. There was a party at the Playboy Mansion. And I think the real Tony guy showed up and Hugh Hefner was like hanging out with him thinking it was Jim Carrey and then Jim Carrey rolled up. Like I didn't know watching the documentary, looking at the B-roll of the Playboy Mansion, who was who. And he, Well, that's exactly what Andy Kaufman did. Like it used to be his writer that would do it or they'd book Andy Kaufman and this other guy would show up. Who was supposed Bob to be Zamuda. Manager. Yeah, right. There you it was, go. But well, it was huh? crazy because, you know, they had all this. this uh, Giamatti be- plays him, right? In the movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Giamatti. Yeah, because right. they inter- they interviewed Giamatti. And uh, DeVito was in the movie, the whole thing. I didn't know any of this shit. But bottom line was, you know, they had all this B-roll of Jim sinking into Andy Kaufman's character, like method acting for real. Like, mm-hmm. not just like, I'm going to show up at the last minute as Andy Kaufman and do my job. It's like, I'm going to terrorize the set. Like, I'm going to be Andy Kaufman. Oh, yeah, it sucked. It really did no, suck. It's and method. No one likes method actors. Well, and and, you know, like... I guess who was the wrestler he had gotten into it with, Matt? Jerry the King Jerry Lawler. Lawler. Jerry yeah. Lawler. Like for instance, Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman were cool. Like they they played a bit where they hated each other on TV, but Jim couldn't differentiate. Like you know he he couldn't pick where the line was, and he was stepping over the line the entire time. He got Jerry Lawler to kick his fucking ass in the trailer. Uh, he just went too far. I didn't come away from that movie liking Jim Carrey more. No, well said. <laughs> but it's it's incredible footage. I enjoy that movie a lot. There's parts the of it where I really like it. Yeah. Um, and I think there's parts where Jim Carrey talks about the creative process. It makes me like Jim Carrey more than I did before. Yeah. But the method part of it, it's really tough. And, you know, I think Jim Carrey knew he was going to, like, push the line, especially if they're doing a long documentary on top. On top of, like, that when that movie came out, the movie was a big deal. Yeah, but, like, his family, Andy Coffin's family was coming on set, and he was, like, giving them hugs and talking to them like the son. Yeah, that was weird. That, that was, was weird. Super weird. And they had uh, Danny DeVito on that because Danny DeVito and him both were on that show Taxi. So Danny DeVito was like playing a younger version of himself. A- yeah, I mean, worth a watch. I'm tw- I got 20 minutes left. I can't imagine him pissing people off any more than he has already. Um, yeah, Matt, anything? Read anything? This is uh, this is all she wrote. I saw Oppenheimer. You guys should oh. check it out. Uh, I, I definitely recommend seeing it in theaters. It was really enjoyable. Uh, super, super dark, but that's haven't... all I want to know. I don't want to know anything yeah. else. That's yeah. all I you say. haven't Tell seen uh, Sound of Freedom, though. I noticed. <laughs> you like sex trafficking? Well, it's doing well at the box office. So. Oh, I figured. Yeah.